Welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. All this month, we're studying on five keys to a successful life. I've already taught on the first three, which is be joyful, be glad, and be God's creation. This week, I will teach on the fourth key, which is be thankful. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank our ministry partners for helping us to go do the work of spreading the gospel around the world. Thank you for the precious seeds that you sow each month so that we can continue reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. Jesse and I are so thankful for you. If you'd like to become a partner and, or maybe give a one-time donation, you can do that by using the information on the screen. God bless you for that. Let's pray. Father, I ask your blessing on this study time as we study together. We invite the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us as we study. Lord, open our eyes and our ears to hear and see what you've called us to hear and see so that we can really grow in you today and understand all that belongs to us as a child of God. We thank you, Lord, for every person that's studying with me. I ask your blessing on their life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to turn to Psalms 100 again. You know, since this is Thanksgiving week in the United States, it's a perfect time to learn about the fourth key to a successful life, which is be thankful. We're going to read this in Psalms 100 in the fourth verse. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to, unto him and bless his name. In this verse, God makes it extremely clear to us how important it is to be thankful when we enter into his presence. We should have an attitude of praise on and be ready to bless his holy name. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to dance or shout or sing up a storm every time we approach God. Praise is often very quiet, and at times we even sense a holy hush in his presence. Let's read a definition about praise from Nelson's Bible Dictionary. It says, The praise of man toward God is the means by which we express our joy to the Lord. We are to praise God both for who He is and for what He does. Praising God for who He is is called adoration. Praising Him for what He does is known as thanksgiving. Praise of God may be in song or prayer, individually, collectively, spontaneous, or prearranged, originating from the emotions or from the will. So that kind of covers it all. It's a great definition. But being thankful is not a feeling. It is a decision. You could choose to be thankful for all that God has already done and has promised you in his word. Now let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I sometimes tease Jesse and tell him that the reason I stopped cooking was because he stopped being thankful. It's a joke, of course, but the truth is we rarely have time for a home-cooked meal because of our busy travel schedule. But when I have time to clean out the cobwebs out of my pots and cook, it's a cause for celebration. I even use the special china that Jesse thinks is just to look at. I consider it worth all the trouble when he lets me know that he's thankful for the meal that I cook for him. You know, God's the same way. He loves, he has prepared so many good things for us to enjoy, and he likes to know that it's appreciated. Let's read about this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. This is the King James Version. It says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, our perfect example, always showed his appreciation by publicly giving thanks to his Father. Whether he was multiplying the food or raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus never forgot to give thanks to his Father. He spoke out of the abundance of his heart that was so full of thanksgiving to his Father God. Now let's look at Luke chapter 17. We're going to see that not every life that is touched by God knows how to be thankful. You know, the Bible tells us about nine lepers who just kept on walking after they were healed by Jesus. Although Jesus responded to all 10 lepers that came to him for healing, only one was actually thankful. Only one turned around and glorified God. And you know what? Only one was truly made whole. Let's read Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. 
Verse 17 says, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that remain, return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now all ten were healed of leprosy, but what kicked the miracle healing into a higher level of wholeness was only one thing for this man, and it was thankfulness. I believe that if the one grateful leper had lost fingers, toes, or bits of his ear that to that dreadful disease, all of those stolen parts grew back that day. Even though this man was a Samaritan, a stranger to the covenant of promise, Jesus said that his faith made him whole. Wholeness means nothing missing, nothing broken. And because this man knew how to be thankful, he was able to tap into a higher level of faith that got all that was available to him that day. And that, was, that brought glory to our wonderful God. You know, there's a great lesson that we can be learned by this story of the nine lepers that forgot to thank Jesus for their healing. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13. The lesson is that true thanksgiving comes from a heart full of gratitude to God for his goodness. And if your heart is not right with God, you're just a pair of lips. Let's read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 in the King James Version. It says, By him, therefore, let us offer to the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The people of Jesus' day were filled with tradition. The Pharisees enjoyed putting on great shows of formality to impress the people with their religion. And they also were very critical when Jesus did not do things exactly the way they thought that he should. We're going to see this in Mark chapter 7. So let's turn there. You know, this statement about lips reminds me of the candy wax lips that I used to buy when I was a child. It usually came out in the fall. They were these huge, red, perfectly shaped lips, and I wasn't allowed to wear lipstick in those days, but they covered my entire mouth. Like a mask, they could change my outward appearance and make me appear to be smiling and full of joy. But they were just wax lips, and they didn't last very long. Pretty soon I started chewing them because they also were sweet. <laughs> now let's read Mark chapter 7. We could continue thinking about this whole concept of just lips. Mark chapter 7, verse 6, gives us a prophecy. It repeats a prophecy from the Old Testament. It says, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, many people struggle their entire lives to keep up a front and say the right word, but they're, words, but they're just lips. They may fool people and themselves, but God always sees right through those lips and goes straight to the source, which is the heart. We're going to see this again in Hebrews chapter 4. You know, as a child, whenever I had a fight with my sisters, my mother would always make us hug each other and say, I'm sorry, I love you. Well, when you're angry, you don't want to say that as a kid, you know, but my mama always knew if it was just lips and not from the heart, she would make us apologize again until we actually meant what we said. Sometimes I had to say it like three or four times. Mother had to be satisfied that it came from our heart and not just our lips. This is illustrated in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. You know, that even if our mothers can see our hearts, how much more can God see through to our heart? It says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That is such a powerful verse of scripture. I want to look at another one before we close today. This is in Luke chapter 12. We're going to turn to that now. Because when we realize that, what, that we are transparent before Jesus, we can take off our wax lips and open up our lives completely to him. Anything that we have hidden from him needs to melt away. Let's read Luke chapter 12, verse 2 in the King James Version. It says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. That is such a powerful verse of Scripture. You know, Jesus' power to save, heal, and deliver is still available to all who will reach out to him in faith with a pure heart. Just like that one leper who had a thankful heart, your faith can make you whole. When you take that first step towards Jesus... He will meet you where you are and walk with you every step of the way. It's just one of the many benefits that you can thank God for today. So open up your heart today and be thankful. That is so important as we live this beautiful life that God has called us to live, which is called the successful life. I pray that you've been blessed by this month's teaching. And next week, I'm going to conclude our study while I'm teaching about the last in our five 
keys, which is be hopeful. So I hope you'll join me next week right here at Voice of the Covenant Bible Study here in Studio C so that you can learn so much more about living this great, successful life that God came to give you. Before we close, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for every person that's studying along with me. Lord, I thank you that you've revealed to your heart the, the, the key to being faithful, to be thankful, Lord, that to receive everything that you have given us. Lord, that your prayer... I pray that you would surround them with your presence as we pray, as we close this study, Lord, and just seal everything that we've talked about. Teach us, Lord, to be real and true before you, to remove any hindrance, any limitation, so that we can truly be thankful for all that you've already done, so that you can reveal the great plans that you have for us in the future. Bless everyone that's studying along with me today, Lord, and bring them back as we study next week. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for watching today. We love being a blessing to you. So we don't want you to miss any of our new content. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you will know when we have posted something new. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Pretty easy. See you next time. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.